Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's webinar. Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, we're, we're pretty much on time, uh, which is uh, good by my standards, usually. Uh, delighted that you could join us and that you're giving up some time this evening to come and spend a bit of time and have a look uh, and have a listen to what we've got to talk about. So the subject, as you can see on your screen there very clearly, is how to start a home-based property business. And uh, we're going to be getting into that. And um, the, the first thing I really want to say, actually, is that this is not a sales pitch. We, we want you to relax. We're not going to ask you to get your credit cards out at any point. OK, so if you want to sit down with a, a glass of water or a glass of wine, some people prefer that, um, whatever makes you comfortable uh, and sit back and enjoy this for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. And uh, we're going to have a conversation that I hope you will find uh, interesting, uh, inspiring, exciting, and uh, make you want to do something in this area. Uh, but that, that's all I wanted to say for now. So just to get us started, and uh, if I click on the right things, we can get things rolling. So who am I? Uh, I'm Martin Welsh. I'm that old guy on the left there. Um, that, that picture's only a few years old, so it's not like... A, a lot of these guys are putting out picture prof profile pictures that are like from 20 years ago. Uh, that was only a few years ago. And I'm going to be joined shortly by my good friend David France, who's uh, going to be talking to us um, in depth about this subject. Uh, and my job really is just to act as the sort of compare for the evening and uh, help facilitate things and get, get things moving along. So um, if you do have any questions or you want to make any comments, feel free to add those in the chat. And uh, one of us will be keeping an eye on the chat at all times. And uh, if you do have any questions, we'll, we'll try and address those as we go. So before we really get into this, uh, we're going to go at a bit of a pace because we've got a lot to cover uh, in the short time we've got available. And we, uh, we, we want to keep you uh, focused and interested in what we're doing. So why have I put a picture of a parachute on the screen? Well, that's because the mind works best when it's open, you must have heard that, just like a parachute. It works best when it's open. In fact, I said that at a seminar once. I used to do a lot of seminars back in the day. And um, a guy said to me, actually, you know, it's, it's not a case of whether the parachute works best when it's open. It only works when it's open. So I think that's probably true of the mind as well. So try to have an open mind. And I'm sure you'll get a lot more out of this session uh, if you do that. Um, so open your mind and enjoy the session. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, book that uh, David's written, and this is available on Amazon. I'm just going to flip across to Amazon here. You can see here that um, there it is, Kindle edition, £2.44. Uh, but here's the really good news. If you stay with us to the end of the webinar, um, you're going to get a copy of this book absolutely free. So um, you can save yourself £2.44, uh, but it's always nice to get a freebie anyway, right, even if it is only £2.44. Uh, but uh, that's a, I think it's a great title, and um, I, I'm going to try to get David to uh, give us some of the some of the gems that are that he's put into his book, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to that shortly. So um, by the way, if you're having any issues uh, on the uh, chat, like uh, I don't know if the sound isn't good or uh, I'm going on too long, or you're getting bored, <laughs> anything like that, feel free to throw it in the chat and we'll uh, we'll see if we can do something about it. So, um, oops, sorry, pressing the wrong button again. Okay, so David, let's um, let's get into this in just a minute, but I, I think maybe it's a good time to um, just get a little bit of uh, background on, on, on who, you, who you are and everything. So David, can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. So I'm sure the listeners will be uh, really curious to know a little bit more about you and your story. So um, uh, how, how did you, what, what is your background? How, how did you get into this uh, business in the first place? Yeah, well, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for attending and uh, thanks for the introduction, Martin. So um, it's hard to know where to start, really. Uh, I'll try and give you an overall kind of picture of where I started and how I got to where I am now, um, so it doesn't sort of take all night. Um, but when I left school, I uh, went into um, an apprenticeship as a carpenter and started out on the bench. 
making windows and doors and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, gradually uh, extended out, got onto site work and putting roofs on and all this kind of stuff. And over the years, it was good fun. I had a good laugh with all the lads on site. Um, but then I started to see some of the older people that I was working with and, and where they were at and they were coming up to retirement and they were just living for the weekend and a, you know one, maybe two holidays a year and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'd always been interested in property and, 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 and making money in general. So I'd explored loads of stuff like the real thing, um, anything from stock market trading to eBay stores to all kinds of stuff. And then, um, and then I bought a property in America. Um, loads of stuff happened uh, throughout my process in terms of just trying to find my feet with, a, with something that actually worked. Now, unfortunately for me, I didn't have a lot of money to start with. And when I started this business, I was starting pretty much as a lot of people were getting out or got repossessed because the financial crisis meant uh, lots of people in negative equity, and and um, and it's frankly similar similar the the, the sort of landscape that we're in now uh, as to when I first started out because there's going to be a lot of negative equity about, and uh, I feel one particular strategy that I've done quite well with um, is certainly about to kind of explode, if you will. Um, so so I, got, I was dipping in and out of joinery, and and I started getting involved with property um, and I realized being a landlord and, and tying up money in property was uh, you can soon run out of cash you know it's, it's not rocket science to buy a property and rent it out but the real trick is to try and get all your money back out of the property or not put as much money in to start with right because you can run out of money really really quickly so I realized that there was people out there that I started to see on some of the forums. There was a lot of forums back then before Facebook was kind of what it is now. And I was on ones like Tycoon. You probably remember them, Martin, do you? Tycoon's forum. And I, I remember forums. In fact, uh, my techie used to run a forum for us. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So there was they, like, they were the thing. Before social media came along, everybody had a forum on their website. Yeah. That's right. So I was on them and I was getting some advice off people and just trying to get a bit of a helping hand. And I was trying to do stuff on the cheap. And I realized very quickly that I was making a lot of mistakes and I was actually losing money with some of the property deals I was taking. And um, and so I was getting a bit frustrated. And like I say, I was sort of dipping in and out of joinery because I was making a little bit of money in property. And then um, and then what happened was I came across some people that, start, that I saw were doing this thing called like sourcing and brokering and stuff. And it's a lot more popular now, nowadays, and especially with Facebook and, and, and stuff like that. So I kind of quickly got into this side of things. And, and it, the thing I liked about it was very low risk, very, very low risk. You're just a middleman introducing a buyer and a seller and collecting a fee for putting deals together. So the fees... I'm sure there's a bit more to it than that, David, but uh, I, I appreciate the simple uh, <laughs> explanation of what it is you do. Before you get into that, I just wanted to go back a step. So we were talking that you, you were sort of getting into property around the time when the, you know, the, the market w was, was in mayhem, right? I mean, at the time, I remember that time very well. It, it had a devastating effect on my business at that time because we went into what they started out calling the credit crunch that turned into a major train wreck as in the worst financial crisis we'd seen since 1929 mm -hmm. um, and of course now today we're in a crisis that will dwarf those financially it's likely the financial crisis to follow the virus will be bigger than a financial crisis of uh, 08 09 but you, you yeah, got in and every, everyone else was getting out right so what was that like to have the vision or courage to say, OK, uh, I know a lot of people saying it's good, you know, you've got to get out, but I'm going to get in. What what made you what was your thinking process to make you say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get in um, regardless of all these yeah. people that are trying to get out? Good question. I, I think it came down to not having a choice. Um, I realized at the time I was working for, for peanuts on a building site. It was really hard draft. It really had graft. And I realized that I just couldn't carry on with it. Uh, not because I'm lazy or anything. Well, perhaps I'm a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I think over time I realized that 
there's definitely smarter ways to make a living um, and, and, and much more lucrative ways. And a new property was quite uh, based on some of the stuff I'd tried, like stocks and shares and all that kind of stuff. And I know the equivalent now is like Bitcoin and stuff, I'm not saying anything bad about Bitcoin, but, you know, each their own. And I wanted something that was more tangible. So the product I decided to pick was property. And let's face it, it doesn't matter what crisis you're involved in, everybody needs somewhere to live. And that kind of, when I got into this business at that time, when there was a lot of people getting out, I just thought to myself, logically, property isn't going out of fashion people still need somewhere to live and with some of the go on, go on. <laughs> i just wanted to jump in on that that so basically and and i just posted something about this on my facebook page just last week actually it's a famous winston churchill quote that is um what what is it uh mo some people see the uh difficulty in every opportunity and other people see the opportunity in every difficulty so you yeah. were a classic case of seeing the opportunity in a time well, of great difficulty and struggle, right? Well, there is that. And I think there's you know, a dose of naivety as well on my side, a little bit wet behind the ears, just kind of thought, <laughs> let's want some yeah. here and let's just make some money. And it was a hell of a roller coaster, um, absolute hell of a roller coaster. Um, right. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm here to tell the tale. And there's a lot of people on, you know, people talk about the journey and all this kind of stuff, but it, it, on the the kind of path or journey, whatever word you want to use, that I came through and, and where I am now, it's uh, there's a lot of people that are just not about anymore. They built up quite big businesses, went really in for the kill, and and then just ended up just getting wiped out and stuff. So I went more slow and steady, uh, and just, just constantly just kept adding to my portfolio because when you do deal packaging or, or deal sourcing, whatever you want to call it, the um, and I've got prepared an example as well for you this evening just to. You know, allude to what I'm talking about, um, but there's, there's lots of different ways to to make money doing what in in property. But this particular route I chose was very low risk, um, and I just traded these deals, put the fees that are made from deals into the bank, and then anything after my living costs. My living costs at the time were very very low, and I was able to then just reinvest that into property. And you'll see from the ne the example I'm about to give you. Contrary to everybody's belief, you really don't need lots of money for to get into property. People think you need loads of money, and you don't. Um, so um, yeah, we, we, we'll we'll get to that in just a minute. But I just wanted to get a little bit more of your story because I'm sure people are interested in knowing a little bit more about the mindset that that you were in at the time. Because um, right. it, I, yes, I mean, uh, I think it does take uh, courage and uh, maybe a little bit of naivety helped you out there. But I mean, of course, again, a lot of people, the minute something goes wrong, they're, they're out, they quit. They say, oh no, I tried that and it didn't work for me. You you can meet people today and say, oh, I tried property, it didn't work for me. Well, what did you try? Well, I did one deal and it didn't go well. Uh, yeah. you, you obviously had some setbacks, but you kept going, right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you think was the difference there? Was it, was it like, I don't know, just focus, commitment, courage? <laughs> One, well, one word would sum it up for me, and that's passion, I think. I'm very passionate about, I mean, it, you can, you know, see some of my videos on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I'm passionate about what I do. And, and even though, obviously, videos on YouTube and stuff, they don't make me any money. They're kind of just just giving people information and just trying to show people there is another path you can go down. And it's not, uh, I wouldn't say it's easy. Everyone makes out this business is easy. And it's like anything, if you put the work in, you'll get the, the results. But and it ties in what you're saying there, really, Martin, because there was a lot of struggles. There was a lot of times where things went wrong, uh, you know, deals collapse and, and all kinds of stuff and sellers pull out and buyers pull out. And, and you, you get through it. And because I had some early successes and I saw the money coming in, I thought, well, there is good money in this, but there is problems as well. And I thought, let's just try and find a way to get through them. Um, and I didn't really have a lot of options because if, if I didn't do property, I, anything else was really sort of drawn towards. Uh, a lot of the other stuff I'd tried just didn't work. I tried the stock market, pressed a few buttons and ended up losing quite, quite a few thousand pounds on the alternative investment market, which was the penny stocks. But uh, And then I'd bought an eBay, uh, like a load of motorbike gear from a, a like a shop and tried to sell it on, on all on ebay thought it was going to make myself you know hundreds of thousands of pounds and actually broke even um so property was something i was really passionate about 
And I think some of you on here might be old enough to remember Sarah Beanie and some of those types of people. There were a lot of the people. Oh, God, that... I remember Sarah, yes. Gosh, that goes back yeah. a bit. Well, they, they were on TV at a sort of similar time to me growing up. And uh, and I thought there's definitely ways to make money in property. But, I mean, those strategies, obviously, now they, they definitely don't work in today's world. And some of the stuff we're doing now is is uh, the creative property world or, or the new ways to buy property, really. I just cut that's the old stuff and the old way, buying property, fixing them up and trying to sell them for a profit. It's just very, very difficult, you know, increased stamp duty, um, the, the war on landlords. There's just a, you've got to be one step ahead and you've just got to be educated. Really. I, I know a guy who recently uh, invested uh, in, in half a dozen properties at once and refurb is was refurbishing them uh, on the basis that he was going to make a profit on all of them. And guess what? With the current situation, that sort of buy it, refurb it, flip it thing is is um, it's in. Well, he's probably not going to make his money back is what I'm thinking, uh, mm -hmm. because he, he overextended. He got a greedy um overextended himself and is very likely to uh, to be in a difficult situation with, with, with that so the the buy refurb it and flip it the timing is not not good for doing that but you've got some better strategies in that i know more advanced more creative strategies and we'll, we'll talk about those in a minute but i think that it's um it's important that people understand the pain that you were in at times because i'm sure they're in pain themselves some of the people that will be listening to this call uh, because we're in the worst time that i i mean i'm nearly 60 uh david you're in your mid to late 30s i think if i remember rightly yeah, 30s, yeah. yeah. i've been around a long time and uh i mean just just i don't want to get bored people with my story but um i started a seminar business 15 years ago um no 17 years ago and uh, it did really well for about five years until this little critic crunch thing came along and just completely annihilated my business. Essentially, it was a seminar business first and a property business second, because my passion was educating people, sharing ideas. I grew up in a council estate when I was a kid. I was poor. My father never owned a car. He rode on a bicycle to work and back every day. He used to tease me and say things like it was 12 miles each way uphill. And I couldn't get that. How come it could be uphill both ways, Dad? But yeah, but that was my dad's sense of humor. That's a good old dad joke, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, um, and um, so I did all these seminars, and then the market just just wiped me out, wiped out the business, and uh, uh, we we lost well millions. Uh, so I don't want to get into the details, but um, the, yeah, the, we lost a lot of money back then. It was a very painful experience to go through. Um, oh. Just on that, on that point, Martin, oh, sorry, to, sorry yeah. to interrupt. That's how we know each other as well, isn't it? Because I attended one of your seminars just as they were kind of coming to an end um, back well, in the that, day. That's right. I, I kept going at a very low level, just doing small events about once a month. I'd get about a dozen people together at my local Marriott hotel. And uh, I would just do a free event or I'd charge 20 quid or something to cover the cost of the room. And I'd share some ideas with people and uh, I know and some good relationships came out of that, but um, uh, none as good as the relationship I've developed with you over the last five years, David, because we've become good friends since then. And yeah. uh, uh, I, I know that we've helped each other uh, uh, quite a lot in the last five years uh, from a business point of view. But uh, um, so really, I just wanted to get that across to people that, you know, it's it's not it's not all smooth sailing. It's not easy. I've never met anybody who made a lot of money or has succeeded in business who could tell you, oh, yeah, the very first thing I invested in uh, doubled in value. I made a ton of money and I've never looked back since. I've never had a single thing go wrong. It's like if they have tell you that, then they are lying through their teeth because uh, yeah. the road to success is a bumpy one. It's not smooth sailing at all. Yeah. Would you agree with that, David? No such thing as get rich quick. We've all we've all looked for that pill. Everybody has and when you come to the realization it doesn't exist you've got to roll up your sleeves and just start getting to work on stuff that you enjoy and that's what i realized i needed to I, do. I agree absolutely you've got, you've got to put the time and the effort in consistently on the right stuff well i think we've got some good stuff I mean, to share with people now well one thing i just wanted to say on that i mean it's what half eight on uh what, what day is it is it <laughs> It's Thursday today. It's Thursday, it's Thursday baby. <laughs> As we know, it's a lockdown, but it's, all the days roll into one. 
But they, at half eight at nine, we've got a family. I could be in, inside with them, but they. I mean, my wife's. You know, she knows that I love what I do, and 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 uh, it, it, I just love property, and I love talking about it, and I love helping people, and just giving the education, and and also working with people to do what we do. Uh, so we work with people obviously in different capacities, yeah, but uh, yeah. And, and by the way, just for the listeners, just before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, we, we when we talked about putting these webinars on, David made it very clear that he's quite happy to give you pretty much everything you need to go and copy him and get started. Uh, so you can do this on your own. Now, I know there are some people that will be listening with a point of view of, OK, um, what's this all about? Who's this guy, David? And don't, don't worry about who's this guy, Martin, but certainly who's this guy, David, and can he help me get where I want to go? And you're in a position where that could be a genuine choice for you. Some of you might be only in a position where maybe uh, maybe you can get the book and you can try and put it together yourselves. And it, both strategies are valid. The difference is the people that work with David will probably um, get off to a much faster start and, a, and a have a less bumpy journey because he'll be able to guide them uh, much more carefully and closely. Um, those of you that sort of think, oh, okay, I'll just I'll just do it myself, but I'll uh, I'll get that book and see what I can put together. You know, that that that's a lot uh, tougher way to go. And, and, and even then, of course, the other way to go would be the middle path, which is to say, OK, well, maybe some of you, um, if you haven't got the resources right now to, to work with David directly, you could um, uh, get started. And then when you've got the resources from what you put together, maybe you can uh, work with David uh, at a later date. So just something to think about, uh, because um, some of you will be considering that option, I'm sure, is like, OK, uh, am, am I going to work with David and he, is he going to help me, as I say, get where I want to go? So, David, well, should we get into the nuts and bolts of yeah. it now or well, just is there a quick, anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, just a quick point on that. So, um, also on my YouTube channel, I do get a lot of people that contact me off the content and saying, you know, thanks for such and such video, they've just done a deal. Um, and some people are struggling uh, to get deals and, and put the process together. But it depends what you're looking for. I mean, if, um, if you just want to, you know, a bit of a hobby, make a bit of money on the side, then by all means, just educate yourself. There's loads of YouTube channels, not just mine, there's loads of people, loads of property books, just immerse yourself in all of this, start making the mistakes. If you want a bit of a fast track and you want to work with people that have done it, then obviously, we, you know, we, we can have a bit of a, a further discussion and a chat. But, um, but yeah, I think I've got a case study to share with you guys this evening. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just want to add, by the way, your YouTube channel is great, everybody. He, he gives out really good quality information on his YouTube channel. So uh, forget the other million channels that are on YouTube. Just just go and check out David's channel and watch all the videos on there, and you'll learn a ton of stuff, uh, stuff mm -hmm. that you pay a lot of money for elsewhere. Sorry, David, should we get into the nuts and bolts now? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah. All right, great. So I'll leave you to uh, uh, talk through this slide for, for everyone. Right, okay, so um, I just took out of uh, out of our portfolio just a, a, a typical type deal that um, this is one specific type strategy, one of many. Some of you are listening, I know some of you, I can recognize some of your names and stuff. Some of you are familiar with these strategies, some aren't. So I'm gonna assume that, you know, for the, for the most people aren't familiar with these strategies. So this is called purchase lease option strategy. Um, and, and again, this ties in with a lot of the deals I did in the credit crunch time because there was lots of people that had little to no equity in their properties. And if they need to sell quickly, then these are the people we can help with this strategy. So I thought it'd be quite relevant because of this COVID-19 situation we're in at the moment. And I personally feel, I don't know about you, Martin, but with my experience and stuff, and, and because of I just see what's going to happen, I, I feel that house prices are going to drop uh, I haven't got crystal ball. I don't know about how much. Uh, Absolutely right. Absolutely, mate. Definitely. There's economists predicting up to 50% drops in, in, in some of the central places, like, so even central London. But um, I don't know if I'd agree with some of those percentages. But either way, there's going to be people out there that are in negative equity and they need to sell. Now, um, this particular strategy, let me give you an example of just this type of deal that's sitting in my portfolio, produces cash flow. Um, and this is in Wigan. Um, and the let me try and give you a bit of an understanding of it. So, 
Um, so, so this particular strategy, you don't need a deposit for, you don't need a mortgage for, I've highlighted that. Now, you might be thinking, well, how the hell do you make money from it and it's someone else's property? Well, we're controlling this under a legal instrument, which is called a purchase lease option, different names for it, lease options, uh, lease option agreements, loads of different words, but ultimately it's the same thing. So we're controlling somebody else's property and all these numbers on here, let me try and give you an understanding of how it works. So we put a thousand pounds to the seller. What does that mean? Well, the seller was motivated. He, he basically wanted to, uh, he's got a portfolio um, of properties all over the UK, a very sizable portfolio. And when we got speaking to him, he said to us, we met him in Manchester, had a face-to-face -face meeting, said, look, what, what's the problem with the properties? And he said, look, my main business isn't this. And he said, I've, he self-manages the properties. He had tenants that weren't paying. He had repairs that were due on properties and he built an absolute monster for himself. Now, property can actually, if you take your eye off the ball, it can turn from an asset into a liability very quickly. And because he bought these at the wrong time, there was negative equity and there was also um, uh, you know, level equity and, and, and you know, these work best when there's not much equity because obviously there's equity, they're just going to, you know, hopefully just sell it and, and, and whatnot. But he didn't need to sell these because he wasn't going to make any money. The problem was, was the distance he lived in, I think it's Cheltenham he lives, um, and the distance is a real issue. Um, and he wanted to just focus on his business and he was at a time in life where he just, you know, he'd made money and, and, and property and, and other businesses. So we decided to, we said to him, look, what we can do with these properties, we, we just did our usual process, which is a fact find, and find out what the real reason is of, of, and the real problems and, and motivations. So we found out that there was over 10 years left on his, on, his, um, on, on his mortgage. So we agreed to buy the property off him in the future, a price we agreed today. And the price that we agreed today is fixed. And it happens to be the mortgage redemption figure. All right. So this is 83,700. I know this might sound really bizarre to some people out there, but this is how this strategy works. So just stick with it. Um, so we give the, the owner a thousand pounds. Now, some people that are familiar with this strategy think that, oh, yeah, but give somebody a pound. You might have heard the, the phrase buying houses for a pound. But it's not always correct. Uh, and you're not buying, you're controlling people's assets. Uh, and we get the same results as if we were to buy it. So we've agreed to buy it off Richard in the future at a fixed price of 83,700 uh, at nine and a half years. Now we did nine and a half, it allows a bit of extra wriggle room because a lease option is the right to buy but not the obligation. So you don't have to buy the property. We could walk away from this. So that is critical for us. Now, if we were to hand it back to the owner in nine and a half years time, he's got plenty of time to do something with the property. However, and this is how you structure these deals ethically and fairly. There's lots of people out there that talk about lease options and they just, you know, all they do is talk about them, but this is how you actually structure them in a win-win format and making sure that you're treating everybody as fairly as you can. I mean, we are in business, we've got to make money, obviously, um, but we've got to structure these in a way where if we hand them back to the seller, then he's got some time to do something with the property. Whereas if we took it right up to the point of expiration of the mortgage, and we hand it back and we say, thanks very much, we don't want it anymore. He might be in a real, you know, that loan's gonna get called in and he's gotta find all that money for the property, the 83,700. So that's how we structured this. Now, interesting enough, it was tenanted at 425 pounds a month. And the mortgage payment is only 170 pounds a month. So we said to, uh, to the owner, we said, we'll give you 170 a month and we'll babysit your mortgage. It goes up, down, sideways, we're liable for it. The management, there was a, uh, we decided to, uh, my business partner, this is how the deal came about through some of my connections and, and just, there's various ways of finding these deals. We won't get into that, that tonight, but uh, a letting agent brought me this deal. We joint ventured on it, uh, put it into our SPV, our special purpose vehicle, vehicle uh, company, and he manages the property. Uh, and it, we, we managed it for 42.50 uh, a month. It's 10%. Uh, there's some insurance in there. And the net cash flow, okay, it's nothing glamorous. It's 193 pounds and 10 pence per month. 
but there are ways to increase that. Again, I won't get into that into this uh, kind of uh, topic tonight because there's too much to get into. In fact, I think Martin, we're going to be doing some weekly webinars, so we can maybe cover them in the future. Um, yeah, that's but, the plan. Uh, I've got, yeah, so I've got some other ways you can generate higher cash flow from these, but ultimately, you know, if um, we've got into this deal, let me explain where it gets really quite exciting. Um, so the net cash flow over a year, uh, obviously we're assuming little for voids and stuff because it's a three bed property. The tenants have been in there for years. They're not moving in and out. It's not, they're not transient tenants. If that was a flat, they might be more transient, but because it's a three bed property, it's freehold. The tenants are in there. They've got, it's got a garden. They're happy. And that 2,317 a year that we get in net cash flow is pretty, you know, it's not far off accurate. I mean, obviously it's not to the nearest pence, obviously. Um, but we've only put down, if you look to the right hand side, just under the property, we've paid the the owner a thousand pound. This is the output costs. Okay, so this is where it gets, this is where I want you to understand here. If you were to go down the actual purchase route of this particular type of property, you would need to apply for uh, in your SPV, if you, let's assume you're buying in a company to avoid Section 24 right now, or Clause 24, again, we won't get into that because that's a whole different subject in itself. Um, but you would need typically, uh, like Kensington and some of the lenders are lending up to 80% loan to value on these properties. Let's suppose you're an aggressive landlord and you're okay with highly geared properties. You'd have to put down 20% deposit on this particular property, which is over 16 grand. Um, deposit you'd have stamp duty to pay in legal so you're going to be into this deal for about 25 grand all right and you're still and you're going to get uh, 193 pounds and 10 a month okay so this is where it gets this is uh, this strategy is this is where it comes into its own we've got the same effect as owning it by controlling it so we pay a thousand pounds to the owner we pay 1,062 legals, that's including the VAT, it's 850 plus VAT for legals, for the vendor. Um, and we make sure the vendor's represented. It's cr critical that they're represented by the solicitor. And this gives us 112% net return on cash employed into this particular deal. So 25 grand versus 2,000 pounds, and you get the same result so how many of these properties can you buy or acquire or, or, or not even using the word buy, but control and get, uh, you know, for 25 grand, you could get a lot more than just one. So this is a new way. This is what you've got to get in the mindset of now. And forget about ownership. If you think, oh, well, you don't actually own it. Well, even if you buy it, you even at 80% loan to value, you only own 20%. The bank owns 80%. So forget that you own it, you don't. You, and this is what really annoys me, some people out there that don't like lease options because, oh, you never actually own it. Well, it's not the right attitude that because the value here is in that option term. So you've got nearly 10 years to buy this property. Do you think house prices might go up above 83,700 in 10 years? Well, I did a comparison report, a right move comparison report before I put this presentation together today. And I think the value at this property is hovering around about the 90,000 level. So it's already a little bit, you know, of equity, not much, but over nine and a half years, if the house prices go up and there's an equity gain, and if we take just a very modest 5%, the, the actual um, number is about seven and a half percent across the whole UK in most areas is seven and a half percent averaged out over a 20, well, 10 to 20 year period, I think it is. Um, so we've been very cautious. So if you factor in 5% growth on this property over the next 10 years, how much do you think that's worth? I don't have a calculator hand, but it's going to be worth uh, quite a bit more equity gain. Now, that case, if you want to buy it, you'd exercise your option to buy it. And there's ways of buying it legally uh, by structuring it so that you put some money in and you can get it back out, all done legally and legitimately. But there's a process to it um, if you choose to buy it. Um, but ultimately, most people like myself want cash flow because a lot of people talk about equity, but equity is no good. You can't spend equity. You can spend, you know, right now in this COVID-19 situation, I don't know if I told you this, Martin, but a few weeks ago I was out in Tenerife um, and 
I was yeah. did I tell you about it? I don't know. Um, but it was yeah. I was over I was over there and this lockdown got really serious while we were over there. Like, gosh, I mean this was long before we were locked down, so it's probably actually a couple of months ago, I think. But anyway, it got really serious while we were over there. So we thought, right, we need to get back home. Um, and one of the things I was thinking when this lockdown occurred was everyone was panicking about the jobs. And I was thinking about the businesses here. And I was thinking, well, what about the portfolio? Well, over three quarters of my portfolio, including this one, the tenants are in receipt of what's known as LHA payments, which is local housing authority. Some of, some of you people listening might be familiar with DSS. Uh, but that's the type of tenants in a lot of my properties. Now, love or loathe them, I don't discriminate. I never meet them. I don't live in any of my properties. Um, they just provide me with passive, predictable income every single month. And these tenants right now are the best ones to have because a lot of the working ones in my portfolio, some of them have contacted me and said, look, I can't afford to pay the full rent. And we've had to work out a bit of a deal with them. So it's important you have a bit of a mixed bag in your portfolio. Um, I know I'm digressing a lot here, but I'm just kind of, this stuff's coming to mind. I'm kind of just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to go into too much detail today. We'll keep it simple. Yeah. But uh, I think the essence of the point there is that you, you acquire this property for, compared to the good old fashioned buy it model, where you would have yeah. had to put down at least a 15% deposit, maybe 20, 25% deposit. Actually, <laughs> You need yeah. at least 20 to 25% of the products that are available right now, at least. Yeah. And, and then you would have the same cash flow and the same risks. And if the market does drop in the next year or two, you know, it might, it might take a, a few years for it to come back again. All of that, and you've tied up maybe 25 grand uh, yeah. to do it. Uh, that's assuming you have 25 grand to tie up in the first place. So for a buyer, this is a much better deal. And uh, it, it, it's, it's, great to hear you talking about the difference between control and ownership because i seem to remember when we first met you came to my free event five years ago or whatever it was five or six years ago i remember putting up a slide about you know forget about ownership control is more important than ownership yeah and uh, so great great to hear you saying that well, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you heard it from other sources too but um, yeah, we uh, absolutely 100 percent agree with you there yeah, I mean, you're not on the hook for debt. You know, if you've got bad credit, this is brilliant because you can control property still and make money because you're not applying for mortgages. You're just babysitting other people's mortgages under a legal instrument. And it just means you can make cash flow when others can't. Because, I mean, if I look at various examples of investors we sell deals to, because let me just give you a quick, this is really important, Martin, so I hope you don't mind me discussing this, but um, oh, yeah. two ways you can go with a deal like this. So we chose to put this in our portfolio because it's in Wigan, it's in the Northwest. We know the area, Danny's let it out. And, um, but there are other um, ways you can go with this. So when I first started out, as I was talking about when I started out, what I'd do with these types of deals? Because I, I still didn't want, even though you're getting into these deals for a couple of grand, if that boiler breaks or the roof damages or anything like that, yeah, sure, you've got insurance for the major stuff, but... Uh, and we've factored it in there if you can see the insurance payment because it's important you you pay the insurance on the property as well. But um, you're still responsible for that property and the condition of it and the tenants. So you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't just think if the tenant damages it, you just got to hand it back to the owner because that's just not how this works at all. You've got to put yourself in the mindset of your, you know, as if you owned it, you've got to put it right. Um, but you're not on the hook for all that debt. You know, the owner is and you've got this agreement to say that you'll pay X amount of money, uh, i.e. the mortgage commitment every single month. Um, but the mortgages are obviously very low and certainly the, the products that are on a lot, this particular owner's properties are very low because when he took them out, they're all in these nice low mortgage products. So it's all important about the cash flow. But what you can do with these deals if you don't want them for your portfolio, like I didn't at the beginning, because I was a bit scared to take properties on when I didn't have you know, a bit of a war chest of, of money in the bank, I decided to flip these on and sell them to investors. And this is what I do and what part of my business does. Uh, we sell a lot of these package deals to investors and obviously they pay us a, a pretty decent fee for these deals, a lot more than two grand, that's for sure, because there's a bit of marketing involved. There's a lot of time involved in putting them together and working with the sellers. I say a lot of time, there's not, I think the probably average deal might take between five to 10 hours to put together, start to finish. Um, but a deal like this, you sell them for five grand, no problem to an investor uh, as a package deal.
But the, the other way you could go is obviously we train people and show people on our partner program how to actually find these deals and you can build your portfolio with them or you can sell them on for a fee. So that's how I started off packaging, building up the income from selling these deals on to investors and then cherry pick the really good ones for your portfolio. Uh, all the ones I'm in, in David, area. I'm glad to hear you mention that because I was just thinking some of the people listening might be thinking that you, what we're proposing is that they become uh, that they take on some of these deals and some of them might not be wanting to do that. But uh, yeah. a good, I mean, you tell me what portion of your business is based on deal packaging, deal brokering uh, versus actually acquiring the deals, which. I, I, my guess is sort of 80 20, right? 80% brokering, 20% take cherry picking. I mean, you tell probably me. 90 10, probably. I'd probably say we sell most of the deals we get because the thing is, because I put a lot of hard work in the beginning, going and meeting letting agents, estate agents, doing marketing, speaking to sellers, and all this stuff starts to compound now. And I got a lot of deals just brought to me, portfolios brought to me. And I'm quite picky on what I take now because I made a lot of mistakes in the early days just thinking, I mean, the first lease option deal, deal I ever did, I won't get into too much detail, but oh, it was the worst deal ever. It was, oh, it was like the house was like a mouse trap. It was like the, if you turn the light switch on, the microwave would come on and <laughs> that kind of stuff. It was just <laughs> terrible property and it cost so much to repair and stuff. And I thought, well, I thought, well, I'm doing a lease option. It's surely I can make money off it. But if you look at your P&L at the end of the year, it was, I was getting killed on it. So, and the good thing about these deals, this is another USP to these, and that, this is really relevant. So just uh, stick with me on this. Um, if you decide to take one of these deals on and you think, you know what, I don't want it anymore. I'm just a bit bored of it. Or, or for whatever reason, there might be many reasons you want to get rid of it. Uh, you might build up a big portfolio of these and think, you know what, I'll start consolidating a bit now. Let's get rid of some that maybe have a bit high turnover tenants or I want to generate some cash quickly. Then you can actually assign a lot of these deals over to investors. So they're very liquid. Whereas if you were to own them, and again, going back to the old traditional, old fashioned buying it model, and there's nothing wrong with that. And part of our strategies, we do actually buy some as well, but you're not buying them at market at today's value. You're buying them significantly at lower value. We won't get on that tonight. We might do that maybe next week, Martin, if some of you guys want to join, but you can get properties. <laughs> yeah. at pence in the pound as low as 50 pence in the pound believe it or not um and those types of deals you can buy with mortgages and creatively buy them and put cash out all legally um but using certain processes and systems um so, so that's it in a nutshell you can trade these or you can uh, you know they're very liquid and you can use these assignment agreements to like a deed of assignment to assign them on or actually assign your lease option on if they've got this signability in there um, and sell them on for a fee you know, to, to an investor. Loads of people out there that know about this now. This strategy is becoming very, very popular among in, um, among investors. And for obvious reasons, and a lot of the reasons I've mentioned this evening, you can get cash flow from them. Um, so, so David, I, I'm conscious of the time. We're, we're just on nine o'clock now, so we've used up our 45 minutes already, so we need to move forward quite rapidly. So I, the essence here is we don't want people to become investors per se, we, but we do want people to look at the main hub of your business, which is about brokering deals and picking up big juicy fees. But also part of your package is, is not is not only that, it, 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 uh, the information, it, it's also giving people access to uh, deals and investors, like where to find the deals and here's, here's my great big pool of investors, is that right? Right. Okay. Well, I won't get too much into the packages because if you want to discuss them, I, there's there's something at the end that I think um, we can potentially look at in terms of uh, like a, a call and stuff and a, and a chat. But to go through it in more detail, but what we do is we've looked. There's no shortage of training programs out there. Some better than others. All kinds of stuff. You know that you can all at different price points. Anywhere from 100 quid up to 30 grand. Um, depends what you want and what you're looking for. But what we've put together is we listen to the marketplace and you know I, I don't like to use the word sort of mention and training too much it's more of a partner program but we've got we've got 8310 investors registered with us right now now that's not a lot and I'm certainly not saying that's impress you because you know as well as I know Martin back in the good old days pre GDPR we had investor lists of 70,000 people plus but a lot of them never responded to any of our any of our marketing 
So we work with more focused investors now, and I'm not saying for a second we sell 8,000 deals a month. We don't. I wish we did, but we don't. Um, and this is why we release this thing called the Partner Program. So we train you up. Obviously, training is involved. And we show you how to we pick an area for you. We give you a license agreement and you're fully licensed under us to operate using our system, processes, paperwork, everything like that to go out and find deals. Now, it's not just about brokering. Some people we're working with one particular person, won't mention any names, but he's building up a portfolio and he's just he makes very good money in the job he's got. And he's just buying loads of lease options. He's acquiring those and he's acquiring uh, properties at uh, 80 pence in the pound. Um, and refinance and pulling his cash out, uh, all kinds of creative stuff. And then there's other people we're working with uh, that are just flipping these deals. We call it flipping. They're just tying them up and selling them on for, you know, deals like this, anywhere from three to 5K, we get as about an average kind of fee. Um, and then, you know, you do a couple of those a month part-time, it enables you to give, it gives you options, um, uh, no pun intended. So so if somebody was looking at uh, yeah very good up very good pun um if somebody was looking at this uh with the point of view of doing this as a uh, a part-time business perhaps or or even as a full-time what kind of money can people make from uh packaging deals uh you know can you can you give us some idea on that well i think i just alluded to the average fees i mean three to five grand but if you're being cautious you said you know you send the average deal for three grand um and you just so I'm working with you. How work many deals do you, you expect to do? Like one a month, two a month, one a week? <laughs> um, it's, yeah, I mean, I like to set everyone's expectations. I don't like to say, oh, yeah, you're going to be a millionaire overnight and all this kind of stuff because it's nonsense. It's 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 work. It requires some effort. But it just so happens this is, you know, quite lucrative compared to what I used to do. Uh, and, and you can do it from home. Again, coming back to the theme of tonight's kind of training, it's a home-based business. I've done all these deals from home and we haven't even touched on some of the other stuff I do. I do international property deals on seller finance and we can put them together overseas. Well, we'll have to talk about that next week maybe, but um, yeah. the point I wanted to get across was, and it's not about telling people they can get rich quick, but I'm just thinking if there's somebody yeah. on, on tonight who has maybe been furloughed from their job or maybe they've lost their job, you know, uh, because there's, there's going to be a lot of job losses and a lot of high street companies are not going to be there at the end yeah. of this coronavirus crisis. And yeah. uh, if they're thinking, well, I used to make 30,000, 40, 50,000 a year. Uh, realistically, if they put in a full time effort at this, could they make that kind of money uh, brokering deals? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, if, they, if they're prepared to focus um, you'll avoid a lot of mistakes. Obviously, if you work with someone like myself, I'll tell you some of the mistakes to avoid, some of the common stuff. If you do this on your own, it'll take you a lot longer like it did with me. And I wish I paid. We were talking about this the other day, Martin. You know, you're asking how much I paid for my education over the years. And it's probably not as much as you have. But I added it up and it was quite frightening. You and me were adding it up. And I think, well, I say it's frightening. It's actually, you know, got me to where I am. But probably paid about 80 grand, maybe plus. And I know people have spent a lot more than that. You've probably spent more than that, have you? On education yeah i worked it out not too long ago i spent over 100 grand on my personal education and uh, that's including uh, coaches and seminars and uh, going back to buying books and tapes in the 1980s i was having tape programs shipped over from chicago because you couldn't get them in the uk and they would cost me like 100 pound a time that's that's to buy half a dozen tapes and mm. and I, I bought loads of those and and but the thing is, it's not that I suddenly got 100 grand and thought, oh, I'll just spend this on personal education. What happened was I would put some money into personal education. I'd make more than that amount back. And over time, as I made more back, I put more back in. And mm. uh, over the last uh, 30, 40 years, it's, it's well over 100 grand. But I know people that have put in a lot more than that than their own into their own education and coaching and, and training and stuff. But uh, uh, you don't get it for free. You don't. Nobody makes a million just by their own ideas. You know, no, there are no self-made people out there. Uh, they all had to go somewhere else and tap someone else's shoulder. Maybe retain a coach or go to a seminar or or just study. Somehow they had to pay other people. You know, to further their education. That's just how it all works, really. So go on. Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, I I agree. With I mean, it's, um, you've got to Should invest we go on in to it the next slide, good. David? Because I think we need to move along rapidly to the end now. I uh, don't want to keep people up uh, half the night. 
Yeah, I think we're just showing ahead to terms on the next slide, just boring stuff, just showing you the paperwork that's involved with signing this deal up and what goes to the vendor and um, all that kind of jazz, really, but it's not that important, really. So. All right, okay. Well, I think we need to wrap this up now. Uh, hopefully, people, we, we maybe we can get some chats, some comments back from people as to what they've thought of uh, uh, tonight's session. Uh, we're trying to keep it down in time, but uh, it's amazing how quickly the time flies by, uh, isn't it, David? But uh, so if you would like, <laughs> I, we could talk for hours <laughs> about this, but we need to, to wrap it up. But anyway, so um, if you would like to have a strategy consultation, uh, we can do that for free. You just need to put into the chat your the best number to reach you up. Because when you register, you know, if you put in a Mickey Mouse number, well, we won't know. Uh, <laughs> but if you really want to hear from us, if you'd really like to know more, we will give you a free home-based business strategy consultation. What does that mean? That's for people that are seriously interested in working with David, um, put in your number and, and we'll do that. But also, um, and it'll either be uh, David or one of his team that will call you back. Um, can't guarantee who it will be. Depends on how busy we all are and stuff. But um, someone will call you back and we'll do a free 15-minute strategy consultation as in what do you want to do, uh, how do you want to get there, and is this the right program for you, and what ideas can we give you about how you could go about doing that. And matching that strategy to your uh, your ambition, your, your resources, your skill set, your experience, um, or, or all of those things, and, and, and ultimately what it is you want to achieve. Um, you can only get that by a one-to-one -one consultation with people. You can't just get that sort of, we, we, you know, we can't give a, in a web in a 45 minute webinar every individual person a unique individual strategy, but we can do it in a 15 minute phone call. Um, uh, so, D David, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Did, did I leave anything out? There is, yeah. And and some of you that end up having a chat with uh, even Martin or or some of the other team, or even perhaps myself if if I've got some time, but. It, you know, you, um, it's not one size fits all business. You've got to, there's a, everyone's starting off at different kind of uh, parts of the playing field. And uh, with one of our experienced people on the phone, we'll decide which m it might be the way for you to go. And it's, you know, it's certainly not always going to be um, suitable for everybody. This business doesn't fit everybody. Um, but if you're prepared to put a bit of work and effort in, then uh, it pays big dividends. Uh, well said, and uh, I absolutely agree. I mean, if we don't think that this business is right for you, we'll tell you. It's not a case of, oh, we want everybody. We, we don't want everybody. In fact, uh, uh, David has a limited number of people that he can work with. Um, so it's much more of a uh, selection process in terms of what you want and what's a good fit and what's a match, uh, not a case of, oh, hey, everybody, you know, um, uh, let, let's, let's get started kind of stuff. So. Anyway, so that's the thing there. And if you give us your uh, phone number um, or you can email us if you like as well, but we much prefer if you give us your phone number, your best phone number to reach you on, and we'll get in touch with you to uh, arrange a convenient time for that call, uh, usually by texting and stuff. So we have got to the point of the, the book. David, can you give us a very quick overview on the book? Uh, bear in mind how late it is. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, it's, it, it covers some of the creative strategies just I mean we've just covered one this evening and, and in that book I cover probably about five or six different ones including the international one and a lot of the UK ones that we operate uh, portfolio acquisitions where you can actually acquire whole property portfolios on things like purchase lease options and also loads of other creative stuff so it's the new this book shows you in a nutshell the new ways to buy properties or acquire properties or control properties building portfolios and also making money by brokering deals or flipping them like I've done in a nutshell. If you want a copy of that, um, we can get you a copy over in a Kindle version. And uh, again, just put some, a comment in the comments box if you with your email address if you want a copy. Just put book next to it so we know that you're interested in the book. If you want a consultation with the team, leave your phone number and perhaps the best time to call. And um, just want to say thank you all for attending this evening. I hope you've got some value from it. And thank you, Martin, as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's been good fun. I love it. Uh, thank you, David. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've had a good time, too. 
Best thing I like about your title, by the way, is without the banks, because I don't know, I just hate the banks. I'm sorry well, to any bankers that might be well, on, but <laughs> everyone hates them. <laughs> everyone does, yeah. doesn't they? Anyway, okay, yeah. that's a, that's a wrap then. So thanks very much for being on, everyone, and hope to see you on you uh, again here very soon. Take care. So, Thank you, but all the best. Bye for now. Bye.